Today we're going to be working to create this visual effect shot, so make sure to watch until the end so you don't miss anything. Like always, if you want to work along with me, I have everything I use down below. Now unfortunately I'm not going to be going over the camera tracking today since I have plenty of videos going over that on my channel already, so if you are interested, definitely go check those out down in the description below. Of course I also have this blend file for you to download down below on my Patreon. Also, quick note, I'm going to be using an add-on today to actually import in our car. However, I'll link some free car models that you can download down below and still follow along with this tutorial. Okay, so now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do is go up and set some render settings. So I'm going to come up here, go into Cycles, and then go to uh, GPU Compute. And then also to render faster, we can come up to Edit. We want to go to Preferences. Let's go to System. And we want to make sure that if you have a RTX card, you're running on Optics, since that's going to give us a fastest kind of render speed. Then let's exit out of here. And then now, since we are in the creative stage, I want to try to get as uh, fast renders as possible. So I'm going to set my max samples from my viewport down to a 64. Let's also denoise that. And then we don't need denoise on the render and 128 for that. Again, this is just the fastest speed since we are in that creative stage so we can make decisions faster. So now let's go ahead and talk about adding in our car and everything. So first of all, what I'm going to do is shift A. I'm going to add a mesh plane like that and then let's go ahead and uh, set up some lighting in our scene just to see uh, and get that kind of situated so shift a again i'm going to add a cube this time let's go ahead and go into edit mode by hitting tab a g z we're going to uh, control click that up one unit and the only reason we're doing that is so that this little dot right here this origin point is actually at the bottom so now if we scale it down our cube will remain on that ground plane and remember in camera tracking it's very important to have that ground plane kind of defined all the time so now that we have this scene let's go to the render view and we do need to set up some settings so first of all let's go to film go to transparent and then I want to go ahead and set this, uh, set our lighting up in our scene. So let's come to world. I'm just going to be using a HRI in today's tutorial. So let's uh, select this ye yellow dot environment texture. Go open our uh, HRI image. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to open the image up and you can see that it's roughly following the direction and everything. Uh, we can change this around a little bit later, but this is actually pretty good for what we're going to be working on now. Uh, now what I can do is I want to set this ground to be a shadow catcher. So let's go to the object properties, go to shading or sorry, visibility, and then uh, mask shadow catcher. And now you can see it's basically uh, having transparency and alpha, but uh, still catching our shadow. So it's, that is exactly what we want. So now that we have uh, the lighting at a pretty decent stage, let's go ahead and play around with the actual kind of hole and the uh, mechanism that actually, uh, you know, raises up our car. And so what I want to do is I want to know the exact frame where I want the kind of animation to start. And so if I kind of play, I want it to kind of wait a little bit, then we'll say at frame 50 is when the actual ground kind of, uh, you know, comes up and we reveal our car and underneath and all the visual effects happening there. So what I actually want to do is I want to start my VFX at frame 50 uh, exactly. So down here, I'm going to set it to start at frame 50. And so now what we need to do is basically create the whole entire contraption. So to do this, let's go ahead and I'm going to delete my cube. This is a good part uh, to go ahead and import in your car model. Uh, now, again, I'll have some free models for you to download down below, but I am going to be using the transportation add-on. So uh, for me, I'm just going to hit in, go to uh, that add-on, and let's add a low poly. We'll just stick with the base Audi um, Q7 and then add that into our scene. It's a little bit too big for me, so I'm going to scale this down a little bit. And then any car model that you do want to use, you want to make sure that it is rigged. Uh, you can see that we have some bones here, and we're actually going to use that to animate kind of the wheels moving and stuff like that. This is actually a very basic rig that comes with uh, most of the cars uh, uh, I have found online. And so uh, all I have to do to just make it uh, be able to actually add animation to it is just make edible for animation. And so now that we have all of this up here, we can go ahead and I want to select this bone structure. Let's uh, rotate it. Let's try 180 and then just rotate on the Z. Roughly around there is where I want my car to actually pop up. And so let's go ahead and bring our ground object. Remember, our ground object is um, still that um, the shadow catcher mass that we had before. And then let's just scale this down so that it's roughly, you know, kind of the size of a car. And now that is looking pretty good. What we can do now is I want to basically define the floor plane of our entire scene. And so let's go ahead and I'm going to go tab. E to extrude and then S to scale outwards and then the, there is an extra face that we have to delete so let's hit X and face and now we have this and this is basically extending out our little print plane but uh, keeping some geometry in the center so we can actually extrude that down. So what I want to go ahead and do is let's select that little um, 
plane in the middle. I'm going to hit Z, uh, E to extrude that and then Z uh, downwards like that. And now we basically have a, our little hole defined. Let's go ahead and I want to go ahead and select all of these kind of edges right there. Let's hit F to add a new face right here. And then if I hit P, that will separate by selection. And now we basically have uh, this plane separate from our actual hole. And so we can kind of animate this center thing, uh, com you know, separately from our actual hole object. And so now what I want to do, let's go ahead and name uh, everything. So I'm going to name this uh, ground plane, ground. And then this middle section, we'll just name that machine for now. Uh, of course, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, but now let's actually model this out. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and uh, disable the Audi uh, right there. And then I want to go ahead and uh, model this out a little bit. Uh, now, I am not a uh, great modeler. And so, you know, take this with a grain of salt. But what I'm going to do is uh, let's shift D, duplicate that down just a little bit like that. And what I want to do is I want this top one. We can A and then extrude that downwards. So somewhere like that, just give it some thickness there. And then I want to select this bottom one and control R will add some uh, edge loops. And so I just want to add those on the side. And I basically just want some support beams on the side of uh, all four sides of our little base here. And so let's select that. And I want to select all these corner kind of uh, faces right there. And then let's E and then extrude those all the way up. And let's try to get this as accurate as possible. I know this is probably the wrong way to do it, and there's probably 10, you know, better ways to do it. But again, I'm not really that great of a modeler, so this is just kind of what I'm going to leave it as. And then, of course, uh, since they are separate, separate objects, we do have to parent them together. So let's just uh, Control-P, parent the object. And so now if I select this top kind of part here uh, and move it around, it'll uh, follow the bottom part. And so that is all looking pretty good. Now we can go ahead and uh, Alt-H, let's unhide everything. And let's also get our Aldi uh, back in here. And so that is looking pretty good. Uh, now we can go ahead and start animating our actual object. And so again, on frame 50, this is kind of the start uh, where I want the uh, ground plane to kind of rest. And so let's hit I, add a location keyframe. And then we'll say 40 frames later, we actually want the entire thing to kind of raise up and uh, basically allow the Aldi to uh, drive out of it. And so let's just G, Z, uh, very important here. Let's go ahead and hide this. We want to go to the side view. Let's go to wireframe just so we can see this floor plane. And so this floor plane, we want exactly kind of on the ground plane of our scene. And so again, let's just select this and G, Z, move that up until it's roughly uh, on the floor plane. So I'm just zooming in a lot here just to make sure it's as good as possible. And now we can go ahead and OH, undo all of that, go back to solid. And uh, we need to select this top uh, plane again, and then I location. And so now we can see that we basically have it raising up. Of course, our uh, car isn't, you know, parented to that yet. And so I'm going to come to frame 90, which is our last keyframe that we made. And let's go ahead and select this thing. And I want to parent it to uh, this little object again. Uh, so you want to make sure our object is selected yellow. Then let's control P, parent that to object. And now uh, you should see that it uh, lowers. And since we set it at frame 90, it does follow the animation there. So that is looking really cool. Let's go ahead and animate our car actually driving out now. And so uh, this is where we need to go ahead and start uh, animating the actual rig. So again, let's select the rig. Let's go into pose mode. And now what we can do is uh, I want to turn this auto keyframe button on here. And so that will automatically update the keyframes without me having to, uh, you know, manually set it every single time. So I'm going to G, just click there. And then uh, basically at the very end of our footage, I just want the car to kind of drive out and, uh, you know, go into the road. And so let's G, uh, double tap Y. And then just move that out here. So the nice thing about this rig is since we have moved the bottom kind of bone right here, it's actually went ahead and animated the wheels kind of spinning. And so we don't really have to deal with that. Uh, now you can get uh, super involved into the animation if you want it to turn, uh, you know, mess with uh, some of these other bo bones here if you want it to bump on the road or anything like that. But this is totally fine for what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to keep it super simple. So just those two things here. Now that we're done with animating, I'm just going to turn this auto keyframe button off. Let's go back to object mode. And and come out and just make sure everything looks natural. Okay, so now you can see our car drives out after, and it's still on the road. Again, we do want to make sure whatever we're doing that our car always kind of remains on the ground plane of our scene, which it does right there. And so now what we can do is finally, let's go ahead and go into render view. 
uh, and we need to start, you know, setting some uh, render properties and some materials and all that stuff to get this uh, ready to, for compositing. And so what I want to do is, uh, first of all, we'll notice that we have uh, the wrong materials kind of set up here. If we actually come to the object property, since we duplicated it before, we need to set the shadow catcher off for this and then also this little mechanism here. So I'm just going to set both of those off. And so now what we need to do is start uh, playing around with the materials. And so let's go ahead and do that. So for uh, kind of my machine here, I want this to kind of be a black or reflective material. So I'm just going to name this. And then we'll just name this black to keep it simple. Uh, base color, we can just turn again to like a black, darkish gray, something like that. And then I want to make it a little more reflective. So something like that maybe. And then uh, the specular, I also want to, you know, decrease that because I don't want... Um, as much you know specular highlights on my uh, object and so that is looking pretty good we can also change uh, the metallic up just so it looks a little more uh, metal looking and so that's uh, you know decent for what I'm going to be using for I'm not going to go too advanced into the materials but of course this is where you can play around with it I do notice though that my uh, some of my geometry is kind of intersecting each other here and so I don't want that I want to try to get rid of that as much as I can so let's just G kind of shift Z move that down so somewhere around there. Uh, again, that's just because we don't want overlapping geometry. And so uh, now let's select this one. We can select our black material again. So now that is looking like that. However, if I come to frame 50, we'll notice that we can see that black material on the top. And so this is where we actually need to take the actual footage and then project the uh, texture of the road onto the top of our material. And so that might sound very complicated, but trust me, it's super easy. And so let's, first of all, let's come back out to solid. I'm gonna bring a new tab over here. Let's go to the shading editor. And then uh, we can see that we already have this black material. And so this is all the settings that we play around with over here. So let's add a new material section. Let's new. I'm going to name this one. Um, let's just name this one road. And so now what we need to do is we basically need to have the texture of our road. So let's shift A, add a image texture. And then I just want one singular frame. I don't want the actual entire sequence. And so the exact frame I want is on frame 50 because that's uh, the basically the uh, first frame where it's going to pop out of the ground. And so let's open that, that up. Okay, so again, we want to scroll down into frame 50 and then open up the image. Of course, this is uh, whatever frame that you want the actual trapdoor uh, to kind of begin its animation. And so for me, that was 50. Of course, for you, it might be different. And so let's plug the color into the base color. And uh, let's go up to render just to see what we're working with. You can see that we aren't seeing any changes. And that's actually because of the uh, material, or sorry, the object's UV. And we haven't set that yet. So let's come up here. Uh, we need to enable an add-on first. Let's go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons. And then uh, it automatically comes with uh, de uh, default with Blender. But you just want to enable the Node Wrangler add-on right there. And then once that is en en enabled, Let's click uh, this image texture, control T and add a texture coordinate and mapping node and plug uh, it into window. And basically all that means is that it's gonna take uh, this image texture and project it from whatever, wherever we're looking. And since we're looking from the camera's point of view, uh, it's where it's gonna be projected from. Of course, we can't see any of that yet. And that's actually because we haven't told the uh, top face is gonna be a different material from our black material. And so what we need to do is let's go into the edit mode. I wanna select this top kind of plane here and you can see it's automatically sled selected it to be our black material. We just have to select it to be our road now and then assign that to the top. And now you can see that we have our kind of material. Uh, you will we'll notice it's a little bit different from our actual uh, default plate. So let's come up to the camera. I want to go to background settings and change the opacity all the way up. It's still a little bit different. And that's actually because it's being affected by the lighting in our scene. And that's because of the principal BSDF. Now, principal BSDF is great if you need shadows or, you know, inter uh, light interactions with your scene, uh, with the HDRI or anything like that. Uh, however, for this uh, specific kind of material on the top, we don't need that. And so let's go ahead and delete that. Plug the color uh, directly into the surface. And now you can see that we don't have any of our HRI lighting actually affecting the top. And so uh, it actually blends in super well into our scene. Now you might think that we have it fully set up now. However, if I play the clip, you will see that up here, it basically uh, gets projected on weirdly. And again, that's because wherever we're viewing it from the actual camera, it's going to be projecting that uh, image onto it. And so what we basically need to do is bake the image onto this plane. So uh, no matter which angle we're looking at, it's always going going to be projected the exact same. And so again, that's super easy to do. So what I want to go ahead and do is basically projection map uh, the texture onto this top section. So let's go into edit mode again. We have the top face selected. I want to go ahead and right click subdivide. 
Let's uh, just do that, let's say, 50 times. Uh, basically, right now, we're just trying to get as much geometry as we can on the top. And so now, with all of these uh, kind of faces selected up top, let's hit U and uh, project from view. And now, we basically have a UV of our top kind of faces. And so what that basically means is that since we are staring from the camera when we uh, projected it from view, it's basically going to uh, align this to the actual texture, you know, of our position of our camera and everything. And so let's... Uh, come out of tab and now uh we will see nothing has changed that's because again we still have a plugged into the window of our texture coordinate so let's plug it into uv instead since we just uv unwrapped you'll notice that nothing has changed over here however if you come out of the camera now you can see that our texture is basically projected onto this plane uh you know basically using the camera as a projector um projecting the texture onto the object and so now if we play the object you'll see um that we actually have the correct kind of mapping up here the texture doesn't distort or anything or show the car uh, and so that's exactly what we want so now we have pretty much everything set up however we do have to uh, render out some different passes because i do want to kind of affect the shadow uh, differently from our actual kind of you know mechanism and car and everything uh, also we'll notice that we have some uh, weird reflection issues over here and so let's solve both of those first i want to go ahead and do the reflections so let's come up here i want to add a new collection we'll just name the the reflection collection and then what i basically want to do is i want to have a plane back here that's uh, basically projecting our uh, image onto it and that way we can use that as uh, you know real-time reflections for our car and our scene and so i'm going to keep it super simple for this tutorial if you were doing this uh, for real you would probably need to model out uh, different objects for like the trees and all that to project onto uh, if you really cared about the accuracy and everything but again uh, i don't really uh, need the high fidelity reflections for this so uh, shift a add a mesh plane let's just rotate that on the x 90 degrees i'm going to bring this out here let's just scale it up and basically all i want to do is i just want to scale it up so it's basically taking the entire screen uh space that back here so s just scale that up and now you can see it's basically taking like i said the entire screen uh here and so let's place that into the reflections i'm just going to name this background reflections to keep it organized and so now what we want to do is we basically want to do the exact same process and project our uh, footage onto this plane back here so let's uh, do this i'm going to name a new material just uh, footage reflections and then uh, again we don't need the principal bsdf let's uh shift a add a image texture node and this time we do want the entire image sequence and so let's open that up okay so now that we have this let's hit a open the image and plug the color into the surface and then just like before we need to control t add texture corner and mapping node and uh since we're going to be projecting this uh throughout the clip we can just set that to be window and then of course i uh we have some clipping issues out here so what i want to do is repeat set that to mirror and now it's just a little bit better of a fall off for the reflection of course now uh, we are having like some shadow issues and all this stuff so it's super easy to fix let's come over to the object properties down to uh, the raise vis visibilities let's change shadow off and then also we'll set the diffuse off as well because uh, sometimes that'll cause some issues with the reflections and everything uh, but now you can see that uh, through the windshield we can actually see whatever is behind this and it's actually giving us proper distortion and you know curves and all that stuff and so that is really cool let's go ahead and uh, you know I don't want this to be seen uh, in any of the viewports. This is kind of just using uh, indirect passes for the, uh, you know, reflections and also the transmission. So, of course, let's come up here. I'm going to uh, set the toggles on and let's change this reflection to indirect only. So we don't actually see on the camera. However, it still is, you know, giving us some, uh, you know, indirect uh, passes such as this transmission through the glass and all that stuff. Okay, so finally, we are ready to go back into compositing. Let's go ahead and remove the movie clip and alpha over since we're going to be doing compositing inside of After Effects today. And so let's go ahead and render a image to see what we're working with. Okay, so here is the default thing. We basically just have a uh, alpha transparency uh, PNG image with a car and all that, and our shadow is baked in. And so now what I basically want to do is I want to separate the shadow from the actual car and raising mechanism. And so that is super simple. Let's come back out to the layout tab. And what we can go and do is we can mess around with some collections and view layers. And so what we need to do is we'll name this uh, kind of default uh, collection or sorry, view layer that I made. We'll name that uh, car for now. 
And then in this view layer, we don't want these shadows. And so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and disable, uh, you know, the uh, kind of shadow area down here. So with my ground, I'm going to go ahead and name a new collection. We'll just name that shadow. I'm going to place my ground into the shadow collection. And then again, since this is just the core kind of view layer, I'm going to make this indirect only. So now it's still giving us nice reflections and all that. Um, actually, real quick is uh, I do want to make sure our, uh, you know, reflections are going to match because if I actually make this ground object, you know, uh, visible, we'll see that it has a white texture onto it. And so on the car, you can see it's bouncing a bunch of white light on it. We don't want that. We want that to kind of bounce the, uh, you know, the texture of the road up on it. And so let's actually uh, go to our footage reflections. And so this is, you know, a similar effect. However, uh, it's, you know, since we don't have the principled BSDF, it's not giving us any shadow or lighting data baked in RC. And so let's come up here. You'll see this little two icon. That basically means that two kind of objects are using the same exact material. So whatever we change in this is going to affect both of our objects. Since I don't want to change my kind of uh, background reflections uh, object that I made before, I'm going to go ahead and press this to make a new thing. And we'll just name this uh, ground mat for material. And so now uh, we need to go ahead and let's bring out a, a new principled BSDF. Just plug the color into the base color there. And so now we can see that uh, it's not matching as accurately as it did before. And again, that's because of the lighting and all that stuff. Let's come outline uh, not selected. Then I'm going to go place a gamma node right here. Uh, and then first of all, let's turn the, uh, you know, the reflections off because it, the road is very shiny right now, but we don't want that. We don't want uh, any kind of reflections or shine in our actual ground object. So let's uh, set the roughness all the way, or sorry, up, and then set the specular all the way down. I always get those a little bit confused. And so now we have this seam, and so we want to try to get that out as much as possible. That's where this gamma node comes in. Let's just kind of increase that until we get a nice kind of blend right there. It's never going to be perfect, uh, but of course, we're just trying to get it close enough uh, because we are not going to actually see this in the camera. Again, this is just for those reflections on the side. So now it's matching up uh, much more accurately, and so... Now we are actually ready to, uh, you know, let's uh, set the outline selected back on. And now we can go in and uh, turn this back to shadow catcher and uh, this back to indirect only. And so now if I kind of come to the middle part here, we will see uh, that we don't have any uh, thing here for the actual, um, you know, ground object. You'll see that we're actually seeing uh, under the ground right now. And that's also because we don't have it set to be holdout right now. And so let's come back up to the toggles. We have this holdout toggle right here. And so now if I enable that for our shadow thing, you'll uh, see that it's basically setting whatever is in this collection to be a holdout object, which basically just means that this entire object is going to be uh, now used to actually not render out anything behind. The only other thing that I am noticing is that we actually don't see inside of the hole. Uh, so it's looking a little bit weird right now. So let's actually, I'm going to uh, unhide everything. And so we'll do that. And then uh, turn shadow catcher off. Let's go ahead and I want to select this kind of inside uh, face loop. So Alt click the inside here just so we're selecting all that. Let's go ahead and hit P to separate by selection again. So it's its own object. I'm actually going to bring this object out outside of here and let's name that hole. Okay, so let's come out of edit mode. Let's select my hole. And then I want to delete the ground material and we can just uh, add a new material. And then I'm just going to keep it on the default kind of white color. Of course, you can play around with materials, add some realistic materials in there. But of course, I'm just trying to keep it simple for this tutorial. Okay, so now we basically have everything set up. We have the kind of ground uh, going up, our car moving out. And so now we are ready to, you know, get to the rendering of our passes. And so, um, again, we need to set everything up. So uh, for our car, let's set this to be uh, a holdout. And uh, but still be indirect only. So it's still affecting our reflections and all that for our scene. And so now we're having this result. This is kind of exactly what we want. We want the kind of, uh, you know, object. Uh, so our car. And then we also want the raising mechanism and us to see inside of our hole. And so this is kind of the result. Uh, we don't want any shadows over here. And so now let's make a new uh, kind of view layer and let's do a shadow view layer. And so this, we basically want the opposite. We just want the shadows in our scene. And so let's go ahead and uh, I do need to make a new collection for all of my objects in here. So I'm going to right click, add a new collection, and we'll just name this car. Keep it simple. So now what I want is I basically want to select all my objects inside of here. So let's uh, just select those two and then bring those into the car collection. And then also my whole kind of object down here. Let's also bring that into that collection as well. 
and then while we're at it we can go ahead and bring uh the audi or your car into that collection as well so if we turn the all uh that on and off now that's all of our objects kind of in this scene uh separate from the ground kind of object that we're using for the shadow and so now let's just uh, set that to be indirect only so come up here and set that uh you'll see that our car is uh, giving us a little bit of issues so let's actually come here and uh, make sure that that uh, collection is also indirect only so now we can see that we only have our shadows out here so that is looking good uh, if i do zoom in here you can see that we don't have it set to a shadow catcher again so we need to go to object uh, properties down to shadow catcher and now uh, that is exactly what we want finally uh, we can turn off the reflections so we don't need that anymore and then uh, all that is set uh, to be good. And we can go ahead and uh, minimize that. And this is exactly what we want in this collection. We only want the shadow, shadow right here. And so uh, just get a result that kind of looks similar to mine. Uh, we can even see that out here we have some uh, shadow with the car. And so that's very nice uh, and will give us a lot of, uh, you know, flexibility and compositing so now we're finally ready to render out the different passes so let's come out to the compositing tab let's uh, shift D duplicate that down let's add a shadow uh, render layers node and then I'm going to go ahead and render these out uh, at the same time so I'm going to add a file output node let's come up to node properties uh, now you can save it in whatever kind of file location that you want and then I'm just going to be saving it as a PNG sequence. Let's uh, change the compression up to 25 just because uh, PNG is actually a lossless format. And so it's not going to matter about the quality, but it is going to save us a little bit of uh, space inside of our, uh, you know, SSD or wherever you're saving this. Uh, so uh, let's add a new output. I'm going to name this one car underscore. Now, uh, I like adding the underscore because it actually separates the text from my actual uh, frame number sequence that it's going to put at the end. So let's do the same thing with shadow, so shadow underscore. And so now let's place uh, the you know car render layers into there and the shadow into there. Um, with testing, I do want to go ahead and denoise this as much as I can. So I'm going to go to the uh, car view layer up here, go to view layer settings, add denoising data. So now we have all this uh, uh, extra kind of, you know, node setups here. So let's go ahead and add a denoise node. And then plug that into the image, the normal into the normal, and albedo into the albedo. Uh, and this way it just denoises the image a little bit after it finishes rendering. And so it's going to get all the noise out as we can. So again, you do want to make sure you set your uh, base path and everything. Let's go ahead and render an image just to see uh, that everything is correct. Okay, so let's come out here. And now you can see that we have this pass uh, without our shadow and just all of our 3D objects. And then we actually have this pass with our shadow. And so that is looking good. Uh, one quick note that I want to make uh, and, you know, something a little bit different with this specific scene is that we're actually going to be rendering on the standard view transform. And so if we come out to color management, uh, we can see uh, view uh, transform is set to standard now usually you want to try to uh, render out any cg and agx and so the reason we're doing that is because we're actually using a ground texture from our footage here so if i was to go to frame 50 you'll see that uh, our ground texture is perfectly blended into the actual ground right here so if I was to go ahead and set it from uh, standard to AGX, uh, you won't see a big difference, but inside of compositing, it's going to be uh, the wrong color space, and you'll be able to tell that uh, we actually have a CG ground there. It's very hard to explain if you don't uh, kind of know the differences between the view transformed, but just trust me, we want to be rendering in standard for this specific tutorial. Okay, so now that we have that, let's come over here. I do want to increase my sample count now that we're actually going to render out uh, some high quality uh, stuff. So I'm going to stick to a 512. Of course, you can uh, set it uh, whatever quality you want. And then now that we have everything set up and ready to go, let's render the final animation. So once those are finally rendered out, we can go into the compositing section. Now today I'm going to be doing my compositing inside of After Effects. Of course you can use whatever program that you feel more comfortable in, uh, but if you do want to work along with me, I'm going to be using After Effects. So let's go ahead and import in our different uh, passes. So first is the footage, so I'm just going to drag and drop my image uh, folder over there. And then let's go ahead and go to the different CG passes. Now I went ahead and broke it up into uh, the specific ones. So the car and the shadow have its own folder. So now I can just drag and drop these into there. Of course, you do want to make sure that the frame rate kind of matches the original frame rate of the footage that was it was shot in. And so uh, right here, it automatically and kind of interprets it to 30 by default. So let's just right click, interpret the footage, go to main. And then right here, we can set uh, the uh, assume this frame rate to 24 FPS is what I shot the uh, footage in. So let's just do those to all of that. Okay, so now you can see over here, all of them are in 24 FPS. 
So let's drag our footage and make a new kind of composition down here. And then, of course, we need our car pass on top and then our shadow pass in between there. And so uh, well, since we did kind of start at frame 50, we do want to make sure that these are lining up uh, with the camera track and everything up here. So I'm just going to select these two kind of layers and I'm going to move them to the very end till the last frame of uh, kind of my image sequence lines up there. And so now you can see that my camera track looks good and, you know, everything is, uh, you know, accurate there. What I will notice is that um, we have a little bit of an issue with kind of some lines here. And so a super kind of easy, lazy uh, kind of way to fix that is to select my shadow i'm going to hit p to go to position i'm just going to move that over a little bit on uh, the x-axis just so we get that out again not too much because uh, we don't want to throw off our actual camera track but of course uh, just a little bit we'll get that out okay so now let's see what we're working with let's hit play and now you can see uh, when we go to frame 50 it's basically going to start our visual effects side of things and so since we blended uh, made sure that frame 50 it blends in exactly into our original footage uh, you won't see like a seam or anything you'll just see uh, the actual plate move up and so that is looking good. Uh, one word of caution is that we don't want to correct our kind of car plate at all. You do want to make sure uh, it is, you know, as accurate to uh, the thing inside of Blender as possible. Because if we do play around with it, say we wanted to add a color correction. Uh, so up here we'll add like a curves, for example. Say we wanted to play around and add you know like a uh, like an s curve or something you know something's uh you know super simple uh, you can see now that the very first frame we will see the seam and so that is just very important for this tutorial uh we, whatever we do inside a blender we want to make sure is you know exactly how we want it to look uh, very unfortunate uh and i'm sure there are ways to get it out but um you know just keep that in mind um so now we have this what i do want to go ahead and do is try to match the shadow into our uh, kind of background shadow as closely as possible it's, it's already matching pretty well but i will notice back here uh the shadow is a little bit more blue so let's go ahead and add that in so let's go to the shadow i'm going to come up to the effect let's add color correction and i like using curves and then uh let's play around with kind of the darkness so somewhere around there we'll go to the blue section and i would just want to grab uh this little dot here and just nudge it a little bit to to blue not not a lot uh because it's not super super blue back here and then i also might go to the green and just play around with the green just ever so slightly just so we can try to match uh kind of the color tone and so that uh, matches pretty well i also i might go back to blue and just play around with that a little bit more this is where you can try to match it as closely as possible that looks pretty decent you know close enough for uh kind of the quality that we're going for for this shot and so now the final thing that I like to do is add some grain uh, back into my footage uh, because we actually denoised everything out. And so we need to add some noise uh, back into it to match the uh, kind of footage. So let's come up, uh, select my core VFX. We're not going to add it to the shadow. Uh, so let's come up to effect. And then I want to go down to noise and grain and let's do, uh, where is it? Let's do match grain right there. And so now I just want to take kind of a uh, clip uh, to match it from. So let's select uh, this over here. So we can match the grain and then we're going to use um, the final output right there. And then the noise source layer, very important. We want to set that uh, to layer three, which is our original footage. And so now that we have all that stuff, uh, we will notice that it's trying to correct for the noise as much as possible. So if we enable and re-enable that, we can see that there is uh, now some noise in our actual CG. So that is all I'm going to do for this specific shot. You can, of course, uh, get very involved into this. And if I was actually doing this inside of Nuke, I could go back and kind of break the shadow down and uh, get more accuracy there. But uh, let's go ahead and render this out as a movie clip. So let's come up to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. And then uh, H.264, all these settings are fine for me, but of course play around with them for yourself and add a new folder location by clicking that not yet specified. And then once you have named it, we can go ahead and save. And finally, we can render the final animation. Okay, so here is the final result that we got from this tutorial. Hopefully you guys got something similar or learned a thing or two on the way. I had a lot of fun making this shot, and of course, if you do have any suggestions for future tutorials, leave them down in the comment section below. Anyways, if you made it this far in the video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you like and subscribe, as it would help out me with the YouTube algorithm. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.